My name is Dr. Molly Gabler-Smith, and I am a postdoctoral fellow researcher here at Harvard. I work in George Lauder's lab. I'm particularly interested in how the shape of shark skin actually enables them to swim efficiently in the water. Shark skin actually has microscopic structures on the external surface and we call these denticles, and they're tooth-like structures. So what that means is they're essentially teeth on the outside of a shark's body. Shark skin scales are much different than bony fish scales because the denticles, which are the scales on sharks, are actually made up of dentin and enamel, so they're essentially like a human tooth. They're living, they have a pulp cavity, they have nerves that go to them, whereas a scale on a fish is more like a fingernail per se, where they shed them more frequently. They aren't really as connected as a denticle is. They're not as mineralized, so they're not as hard as a shark scale would be. With shark skin, I essentially equate it to sandpaper. If you rub a shark one way, usually from the head towards the tail, it's very smooth. And that's why when they're swimming, the smoothness actually streamlines their body and allows them to more efficiently swim through the water. If you rub from the tail to the head, it actually feels like sandpaper. And that's because the denticles all have different shapes. Some of them have three points, some of them might have two, some of them are more rounded. And these shapes differ across all species of sharks. They also differ along the body as well. You can have different shaped denticles on the nose compared to the tail, and you might think that that would be important because the tail is where a lot of flow is, so you would want a certain shaped denticle that allows flow over the tail. They use their pectoral fins and their tails to essentially locomote through the water and move and swim. That's really what they're using. Whereas the head is more of like a balancing thing where the nose is going. It's more a directional thing where they're just pointing. It doesn't really have anything to do with how the flow is interacting with the body. The different shapes we see go from a round spatulate shape where it looks more of like a circle to kind of a more triangular pointed shape that has lots of ridges and bumps and it's rough. And what we hypothesize to be the functional differences is that the boundary layer that is actually happening over the animal while it's swimming is being affected by the different shapes. So you can imagine a golf ball has dimples in it and the dimples are actually what keep what we call the boundary layer, which is the layer of air in this case, directly around the golf ball. It keeps that boundary layer attached for longer which enables the golf ball to go farther. So if you apply that to a swimming animal like a shark, if you have different shaped denticles on different parts of the body, depending on how flow is interacting with them, that boundary layer is gonna be affected differently. So you can assume that the rougher, sharper denticles are going to keep that boundary layer attached longer, which is more effective for swimming and locomoting. They use less energy if they can keep that boundary layer closer. The denticles do differ across different species. What we have been seeing in the past is that sharks that swim in the pelagic ocean, swim at high speeds like mako sharks, thresher sharks, they have denticles that are rougher and have more of the pointed triangular shapes compared to, say, a nurse shark that might be staying out on the bottom. And we think that's due because the pointed, more rougher shape of the denticle actually allows them to swim more efficiently through that open ocean as opposed to the nurse sharks which have more, we call them more bulbous or rounded and smooth denticles where they don't necessarily need to be swimming at such high speeds and so the boundary layer may not affect them as much as it would a pelagic species. A lot of people and companies are interested in applying these biological structures to man-made vehicles. I could essentially see them 3D printing denticles and maybe utilizing them on the bottoms of boats. 
perhaps to decrease the amount of drag that a boat might be experiencing in the water. Maybe they could put them on propellers that also go through the water to increase efficiency. And there's a lot of interest recently in trying to make human-made things more efficient and bettering the human life. These animals know how to live in their environment, so it's really good to take those structures and use them for our benefit, essentially. Increased temperatures, decreased PhD, so more acidic environments, um, actually interfered with the development of the denticles. And so that's detrimental to the development of shark skin because essentially this is what is in contact with their environment 100% of the time. So you can imagine a shark that doesn't have properly developed denticles wouldn't survive in its environment for a very long period of time. It isn't directly a climate change, but aspects of what we're seeing happening in the environment due to increasing temperatures and increasing acidic oceans and water could be very detrimental to these sharks.